Hello and welcome to the UTM Financial Mathematics video on present value and future value. In this video we will look at lump sum investments and debts and their values in time both in the future and in the past while a particular interest rate is applied. We will look at discreetly compounded interest rates as well as those compounded continuously. Let's have a look at some of the formulas we will be using. Let's start by defining some of the variables involved in the formulas we will be using. If we know the future or accumulated amount of an investment, let's call it S, and we would like to find the starting investment amount, let's call that P, we would use the present value formula. This is given by P equals S times 1 plus R to the power minus N. On the other hand, if you are given the present value of an investment, let's call it P again, and you want to find the future or accumulate an amount S, you would use uh, the future value formula given by S equals P times 1 plus R to the power N. Let's take a closer look at these two formulas. Here, R is the periodic rate and is given by APR divided by the number of periods per year. APR, also known as annual percentage rate, is the nominal interest rate, for example, 6%. The number of periods per year is determined from the wording. For example, quarterly compounding would mean four times a year. Semi-annual compounding would mean two times a year. Weekly compounding would then be 52 times a year. N is the total number of periods in the question. For example, an interest rate of 6% compounded quarterly for eight years gives a periodic rate of R equals 6% or 0 0.06 divided by 4 since it's quarterly compounding, which is equal to 0 0.015, and n is equal to 8 times 4. Once again, it's times 4 since it's quarterly compounding for a total of 32 periods. To help us determine which of the two formulas to use, present value or future value, we will make use of timelines. Here is how. Step 1. Draw a timeline, if applicable, and indicate the amounts at the appropriate year or years. The amounts I'm referring to are what you are given and what you need to find. Before I go on to Step 2, I should mention that at this point it would be advisable to put an arrow from what, you, what amount you are given to the amount you need to find. Step 2. If the arrow points to the left, you would use present value. Let's look at this image closely. Here, S is given in year 5 and you are trying to find what is P equal to in year 0 or now and the arrow therefore points to the left and you would use present value. If the arrow points to the right, you would use future value. Let's look at the image again. Here you are given P and you want to find what is S equal to in the future, five years from the beginning, and therefore you would use future value. Step 3, write out what you are given in the word problem. 
This means write what is r equal to the periodic rate and what is n equal to the total number of periods. Step four, choose the correct formula and solve for the unknown variable. Here's an example on future value. Suppose that you invest $5,000 into the bank today. If nominal interest is 6% compounded monthly, how much will you have after three years? We start with a timeline. On the timeline, notice that we have marked the 5,000 in year zero and S equals a question mark in year three, since that's what we need to find in this question. Also notice that the arrow is pointing to the right. Here is a list of the givens. We have that P equals 5,000. And since interest is compounded monthly, the periodic rate R is going to be 6% or 0 0.06 divided by 12, which is equal to 0 0.005. And N will be 3 times 12, 3 years times 12 times a year, monthly compounding equal to 36. Using the future value formula S equals P times 1 plus R to the power N, we get S equals 5,983.40. In conclusion, after three years, you will have $5,983.40 in your bank. Here is an example on present value. Suppose you have $5,000 in the investment now. If for the past seven years, interest on this investment was at an APR of 6% compounded quarterly, how much was the initial investment? We start with a timeline. On the timeline, notice that I have put the $5,000 in year seven and P equals question mark in year zero. This is because we're looking in relation to $5,000 now, what was its value seven years ago? Also notice that the arrow is pointing to the left. This means we will be using present value. Next, we make a list of all the given values we're given that S equals 5,000. Since interest is compounded quarterly, we'll have the periodic rate equal to 6% or 0 0.06 divided by four due to the word quarterly. This equals 0 0.015. And of course, N is going to equal to seven times four equal to 28 using the present value formula P equals S times one plus R to the power minus N, we get that S equals 3,295.50. Therefore, the initial investment must have been $3,295.50. Let's look at interest compounded continuously. If we make the time interval of a period infinitely small, then interest will be compounded instantly, in other words, at every single instant. In that case, we say that interest is compounded continuously. Let's have a look at the trend. Semi-annually would mean twice a year while quarterly means four times a year. Monthly compounding would be 12 times a year. And daily compounding would be 365 times a year, quite often. Looking at continuously, what we mean is infinitely many times a year compounding. Future value for continuous compounding is 
given by s equals p times e to power r times t, while present value for continuous compounding is given by p equals s times e to the power minus rt. Here, p is the principal amount invested at the beginning, r is the annual percentage rate as a decimal, t is the number of years it takes to accumulate, and s is the compounded or accumulated amount. Here's an example on interest compounded continuously. Suppose you have a debt of $2,000 payable at the end of two years. If you decide to pay off the debt now with interest compounded continuously at 6%, how much should you pay to settle this debt? We start the solution by drawing a timeline. Notice that we have put the $2,000 in year two, while P equals question mark is in year zero and the arrow is pointing to the left. Here are all the given values. S is equal to 2000. In this case, the rate is R equals 6% or 0 0.06. And T is equal to two years. Since we want to calculate the present value, remember the arrow is pointing to the left, we will use p equals s times e to the minus rt, and putting the values in to this formula, we get that this is equal to 1,773.84. Therefore, you should pay $1,773.84 to settle your debt now. Now that we have had a discussion of present value and future value, both for discreetly compounded and continuously compounded interest rates, we will use a timeline to determine which of the formulas to use, present value or future value, discrete or continuous compounding. Here's a checklist for solving present and future value problems. Start by highlighting all the given variables and identify them. Draw a timeline to determine whether to use the present or future value formula, or both. Determine if the question uses discrete compounding or continuous compounding. Here's a list to choose from. For discrete compounding, we have future value given by s equals p times 1 plus r to the power n, while present value is given by p equals s times 1 plus r to the power minus n. For continuous compounding, future value is given by s equals p times e to rt, while present value is given by p equals s times e to the minus rt. Substitute the given variables into the formula and isolate for the unknown variable. And finally, write a concluding sentence. Here is an example on a combination of two scenarios. Suppose you have a debt of $2,000 due now and another debt of $6,000 due in five years. You plan to pay off both debts with one single payment in year three. If nominal interest is at 7% compounded semi-annually, how much will this payment be? We start the solution by drawing a timeline using year three as our reference year. Calculating the future value of $2,000 in year three involves using P1 equal 2,000, the rate R equal to 0 0.07 divided by two, two since 
the compounding is done semi-annually. And n1 equal to 3 times 2 equals 6. We use the future value formula, s equals p times 1 plus r to the power n, since the arrow is pointing to the right. We get s1 equals to 2,000 times 1.035 to the power of 6, giving us 2,458.51. Continuing with the solution to this problem, we will now look at the $6,000 debt due in five years. Using year 3 as our reference year, the timeline is drawn as follows. Calculating the present value of the $6,000 in year 3, we have that S2 is equal to 6,000. The rate R, the periodic rate, is 0 0.07 divided by 2. And N2, which is the total number of periods in the two years, will be 2 times 2 equals to 4. Using the present value formula, P equals S times 1 plus R to the minus N, we get P2 equal to 5,228.65. Your payment in year 3 will be a combination of the future value of the $2,000 and the present value of $6,000. In other words, it will be S1 plus P2. And this is equal to 2,458.51 plus 5,228.65, which adds up to 7,687.16. Therefore, the single payment to pay off your two debts in one shot will be $7,687.16. This brings us to the end of the UTM Financial Mathematics video on present value and future value. Thank you for watching, but before you go, Try your hand at the following practice problems. Good luck!